joining me. Hi there. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, whatever time zone you found yourself in. My name is Phil from Radio.co. And uh, yeah, welcome to our Radio.co product tour, also a guide all about how to launch your very own community radio station. Uh, yeah, so primarily this demo is going to consist of a guide through how our software works because it's all about how radio.co how our software uh, can help you create your very own uh you know community radio station and a successful and stress-free one at that uh so yeah over the next 30 minutes i'll be guiding you uh, also, uh through the software to show you how radio.co can genuinely help you easily launch and manage your own 24 7 community radio station uh, i'll also cover some pro programming tips, some equipment guidance uh, to help you begin broadcasting professionally as soon as you turn as soon as you turn your station on air. Uh, understandably, launching your own online radio station can sound incredibly daunting, but what you'll begin to see during the course of this demonstration is just how easy it is to actually do, or rather just how much radio Radio.co can do for you to make it totally stress-free, as I say, so you can focus more on your content and your marketing, which is arguably the most important thing. Uh, so the reason for hosting a community radio-themed one today is simply due to the fact that every year, particularly here in the UK, local community radio stations are being taken over by networks, and they're having their local identity stripped away. So us as fans of radio and ones who, you know, want to really uh, strive in communication and entertainment for a local community, we don't have that anymore. And local radio is unfortunately dying out, but working alongside Radio.co, you can turn the tides. So if there's anything that this pandemic has taught us, it's that there's nothing more important than the local community. So now more than ever, there's really no better time to launch your own local online radio station. Again, whether it is just for reaching out to that community, keeping people in the loop, or just keeping people sane and happy. So without further ado, allow me to jump into this demonstration of how Radio.co can help you achieve this. And if you have any questions at all, then please feel free to ask them in the comments during the course of the video. Uh, you you, you know, some of you did submit questions beforehand, so I have got some already aside to answer. But yeah, if you've got anything at all about our software or just general advice that you're seeking about launching your own online radio station, then please do yeah, write them in the comments wherever you are watching, and I'll uh, try and answer as many as I can during the presentation. Okay, so let me just jump onto my screen here. So, uh, so yeah, what you'll see here, first of all, is your radio.co dashboard. So when you actually do create a radio.co account, it only takes a couple of minutes. Uh, all you need to do is go to our pricing page, find a plan. We have five different plans, each giving you different allowances and different features. And it's ultimately finding out which one you feel is giving you the best head start for launching your station. Follow the instructions, couple of minutes later, this is what you'll see, your radio.co dashboard. So a couple of things here. It's just really a general overview of what's going on your station right now. So first of all, you'll see this most important, this on air button. Now you can actually turn your station on and off as often as you want. So I can just turn my station off. Here we say like that. And then you just give it a couple of seconds and it's off. Everything will gradually fade out and fade back on. But yeah, you can turn your station on and off as often as you like, whenever you want. But the beauty of this software is it's all completely cloud based. So unlike a terrestrial radio station, you know, a typical radio station, you do need a computer to be on constantly 24 seven to make sure your broadcast is on. But not with ours. Ours is all cloud based. So it's actually us that power your station for you. We're the ones that will keep your station broadcasting 24 seven. The only time you would ever need your own computer on is if you are ever doing a live broadcast or if you just wanted to log in and make some changes to your programming. Otherwise, yeah, leave your computer off. You can even leave your internet off if you wanted to, because as I said, it's us that are powering it for you. So I'm just turning my station back on and that's it. We're, uh, we're broadcasting once again. Now, this information at the top here, this is for live broadcasting. So as well as creating pre-recorded programs, you can actually do live broadcasting. So if you do want to get that real local community flair and uh, communicate with everyone where any, wherever they are in your local town or city, then yeah, do it live. There's nothing more exciting. So here you'll see, first of all, connection status. That's whether you at host, whether you as the user are connected to your station in order to do a live broadcast. If you're not like me, it says not connected. If you are getting ready to do a live show, this will change to say connected and then live. Likewise, this will count down the time you have until 
you're doing a live show, as it says now, or if you are live, it'll tell you how much time you have left. And then to actually connect for a live broadcast, First of all, you just need to hit this. This is a broadcaster. Think of it as kind of like the missing piece of a jigsaw or the missing piece of a long piece of pipe. If there's a piece missing, and that's where this broadcaster comes in, you're basically telling the software where your live audio is coming from. It will then take that audio and turn it out uh, and put it online on air. So that input could be a microphone. It could be a mixing desk. You know, it could be anything you want. Tell the software where your live audio is coming from. It will take that feed and send it out on air. And there we go, you're broadcasting live on air. Now this broadcaster itself is actually exclusive to Windows. If you are a Windows user, then use this. If you're a Mac user, we are hoping to develop our very own equivalent uh, in the near future. So for now, we do recommend you using a third party as one in particular called But or broadcast using this tool as its full name. And there it will ask you just for this, your unique host port and password for your station. Enter that information where it is relevant. And there we go you're instantly connected. If you do need more guides, more information about how to use the broadcaster or but, uh, you will find all this information on our help center at help.radio.co. Okay, this here is all relevant depending on whichever plan you want to have. So this shows that your concurrent listeners, your listenership, the maximum number of simultaneous listeners. Bandwidth, so that is, um, you know, how much uh, data is being used up by people listening to your station. And then storage, you know, for all your music, jingles, adverts, whatever you want. And this just shows you a general overview of what's going on right now. So here we go. We have our media tab here. So this is probably where you'll uh, end up going first. So uh, this is where you will upload your content. So what you do is you go to the add media here. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can upload your content. First of all, as long as it is MP3 or AAC, you can upload your tracks. And they can be anything you want. As I said, they can be music, jingles, adverts, podcasts, interviews, anything you like. And there's different ways you can upload your content. First of all, just via the browser. Click on this, select files here, select the files that are saved onto your computer or local external hard drive, and just upload them to your, uh, to your account there. If you are a community station looking to play a wide variety of music, then you may want to use FTP, which stands for File Transfer Protocol. It's basically just a more aggressive way of, uh, of uploading. Bit of a strange term to describe it, but it means you can upload dozens of files very quickly. Um, you know, you can set loads of them going, and overnight you could, you could potentially upload thousands of tracks overnight. Uh, we have recently introduced ways of uploading tracks via uh, Google Drive and Dropbox as well. So uh, that's a, a new way of uh, uploading your media. But when they are uploaded, they'll all appear in a long list format like this. Now, the first tip I'm going to tell you about community radio, um, at least, you know, how to best uh, get out of it through our software is by using these brightly colored labels or what we call tags. Now, again, as I mentioned before, if you are a community radio station with a wide variety of content, not just music, but, you know, anything to do with your community, then using these tags are a great way to help you keep on top of what you've got. They're essentially a way of organizing your media. First and foremost, you can create a label like this and attach it to all of your tracks. And these, as you can see here, my labels, my tags, jingle, podcast, dance, 60s here, they're not predetermined ones. They're ones that I've created myself because you can create any tag that you like. So let's highlight these tracks here. So say, for example, I've highlighted four tracks here that are pop music, something like that. Uh, so what you do is you highlight them here. Add where it says add and create tag. And you can be as broad or as specific as you want. There's a couple more that I've made. So say, for example, these are... 2000s music, something like that. Click on add. It will create that tag and attach it to those tracks. So now I can apply that tag to as many different tracks as I want. Now you can also apply them to an entire page. There's 50 tracks per page. So again, coming from a, uh, a community radio standpoint, I guess a typical radio station may have an A list, a B list, and a C list, you know, things to show the variety, the rotation of the tracks that you want to play. So I could highlight them here, all 50, and I'm going to create A list, something like that. Click on add. And there we go. All these tracks will now have the A list. And as you can see, you can attach multiple tags to your tracks. So I now know all these 50 tracks are going to be in my A-list. So the tracks I'm going to be playing more often than most. So that's just a way to use the tags. So first and foremost, a great way of organizing, but you can also use these tags in your playlists. So I'll show you how to do that uh, very, very shortly.
Um, a great feature that we have if you subscribe to at least our bronze plan, particularly again for a community radio station or any station really of that fact, uh, is the re our live recordings feature. Now, what this does is this allows you to uh, set, uh, schedule your live shows to record. So as soon as you come off air, you will have a live file of, uh, of exactly what you've just come off air uh, doing. So you can see here, I've got a two hour long file, MP3 file of the show I've just done. And once you've got it there, you can kind of recycle this content. So, you know, your shows no longer have to be one and done. If you want people to listen to it again or upload it somewhere for more people to reach, you absolutely can. So what you can do is you go to the actions button here. And there's a couple of options. You could just download the recording. You know, you just download it for personal use, maybe upload it on your own website, maybe. Uh, we actually have our sister company, podcast.co. So if it's a talk show you've done, talk piece of content, or maybe it's a, you want to make like a best of compilation. That's what a lot of local and national stations do. They'll have a live four hour breakfast show full of music. Someone, It's then someone's job to cut out all the music and just put all the, uh, the talk segments together into a best of package. That's a fantastic way of getting your content out to a, an audience that may not otherwise have bothered looking, uh, you know, listening to you live make it into a podcast. It can then be available on the likes of Spotify, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, reaching potentially millions of people who otherwise, again, wouldn't have found your station if it was just live on the radio. So turning it into a podcast. Also, if it's just a music show, you can also publish it directly to Mixcloud. It's all about making the most of your content. As I said uh, just earlier, your live shows no longer have to be one and done. Recycle them, repurpose them, you know, make the most of your talent and, you know, reaching your audience in a way that was never possible before. Voice tracking, a stable tool that you find in any typical radio station. This just allows you to record vocal content up to 10 minutes in length that you can then place throughout a playlist to give off the impression that your pre-recorded show is actually live. There's a live DJ behind it. Uh, this is also a great way of getting um, and recruiting new DJs. Not everyone wants to live uh, right off the bat, it can be quite daunting. So if you've got a team of, uh, you know, a young team of DJs or maybe uh, old vets who have, uh, you know, been out of the game for a little bit, then if someone's not ready to go live or you don't feel they're ready to go live, then build them a playlist, invite them to record voice tracks, you know, nice way of getting up confidence and used to uh, getting, uh, presenting on the radio. So I'll show you how to record your voice tracks within your playlist very, very shortly. Um, talk shows. Now, uh, this, not to be confused with an actual talk show, I, you can do talk show on, on any plan. All of our um, accounts will let you do your talk shows to, you know, live talk shows to your audience. What this will allow you to, this is just a, a more convenient way of recording uh, remotely with guests from all over the world. So if you want to interview a guest, you know, from their own home, particularly during this time where, you know, we're not you know, mixing households and, you know, getting as close to people as we once were, this is a great way of recording interviews with uh, you know co-hosts or just guests from all over the world what you do is you essentially invite them to an online green room you invite them into that room you hit record and you can record up to a 60 minute segment it's not for live programming just for pre-recording but again it's a nice easy way of recording content with up to three guests from all over the world it's, a, it's an incredible tool to have and it's definitely one worth thinking about if you do want to subscribe to our gold or our pro plan and then we have news can be an, an essential tool, particularly during this day and age uh, and something you may want to consider on your community radio station. What this allows you to do is to build a, a news package, really. You choose an intro and an outro you want to put on your news bulletin. Of course, it doesn't have to be an introduction or a piece of music. It can be a top of our jingle. It can be a sponsor. Um, you know, if you want to monetize your station, a way to do it can be to get sponsors. You know, get someone to sponsor your weather reports, your news reports. And this is a way to automate its broadcasting. It can go out before the news or after the news. It's just a way of having a reoccurring message for your sponsor to get a nice bit of revenue in. So this is where you would do that. You would put your top of our jingle or advert here, choose a new source that you want to use. Um, we do have some recommendations for new sources that you can use if you visit our blog on radio.co forward slash blog. Uh, but once you find a new source, it just needs to be an MP3 news source. Um, and once you've added it in, choose how frequently you want it to go on air. So um, I can say Monday to Friday between the hours of 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. And what it would do is during every automated hour, this news bulletin will automatically fade in on air. So if you've just got automated playlists, it will automatically fade in. If a DJ is going live, 
it can't interrupt a live DJ. A live DJ is kind of like the apex predator of uh, of your station. They can't be in, uninterrupted, you know, even though sometimes we wish they were. So uh, the only way to really get an automated news broadcast whilst a live DJ on is perhaps schedule a live DJ to start maybe two minutes past every hour. They do a show from two minutes past 12 to one o'clock, something like that. And using that two minute period between uh, 12 and two minutes past 12 to have an automated news bulletin. But yeah, it's just a great way of, um, you know, great thing to think about if you do want to have news and you want to automate it. We can do that for you. OK, so that's kind of a breakdown of some of the features that we have that can make your, um, you know, creating and managing your community radio station uh, relatively simple and easy through our software. So um, I'm going to move on to playlists. This is how you will build your shows. So it's very, very easy to build a show. Pre-recorded shows, these are here. So you can have a pre-recorded music show pre-recorded talk show, whatever you want. So you can see a couple of examples I've got here. Now, there is one playlist here called the default playlist, and we've actually built that to be as helpful as possible for you launching your online radio, uh, radio station. What this will allow you to do is if you are doing a live show, uh, or, you know, whether it's in a studio or remotely, or whether it's yourself or it's another DJ like me, for example. Uh, obviously, having a stable Internet connection is, is a major concern. You want to have a stable Internet connection to make sure you maintain a stable connection to the server, to your station. But what happens if that Internet connection's cut off or there's a power cut? Or for any reason, I'm your DJ. I text you a minute before I'm due on air to say something's come up. I can't do the show. Then what you can do is actually set this default playlist to automatically fade in and begin playing any time um, there's a technical emergency like that. The software will detect that there's been a loss of connection between the DJ and the server. And when there has, this will automatically fade in. It will automatically fade in as well when there's nothing scheduled on your uh, on your schedule. So this is a way of helping you create your programming so you don't have to create 24 hours of content every single day. We can do a lot of that work for you. We can fill in those gaps for you. So to build a playlist, go to the top here where it says new playlist. Now I'm just going to call this one Thursday night because it's Thursday night here in the UK. So Thursday night, give this a color say a nice uh, burnt orange color there, click on the add button and it will then take you to your playlist builder. So you can see this is the name of the show. This is the name of the playlist we're building and its current length here. Now, if I want to add a track to my playlist, all I need to do is click on the plus button next to every track going in. And you can see I'm going to work my way down the list. And every time I click on the plus button, it's jumping straight into my playlist here. So I can work my way down. I can type in the names of tracks here to find them. I can also type in the name of tags to find tracks as well. But once I've added all my tracks in, of course, you can see as well, the duration is adding up. Once they're on this side, you can move them around, get everything in the right running order for you, like so. So you don't have to add tracks into any particular order. Just move them around. Now, obviously, some um, some softwares on terrestrial radio stations will automatically generate playlists for you. You do have to build your playlist yourself manually. So if you wanted to add particular tracks in uh, for a certain time, this is how you do it. Just uh, add them in, move them around, get everything in the right order. Now, actually, we can actually automate your playlists for you to a degree. And by doing that, you'd actually use tags. So if I go to the option here on the left, you'll see tags and you'll actually see a list of all the tags you've made and you can use these in your playlists. So I'm going to take this 90s tag here and I'm going to drag it into my playlist like so. So you can see I've got this 90s tag as my track two in this case. And what the software will do is when it gets to this tag in the running order, the software will play a random track that has that tag on it, followed by a, another random 90s track here or a random uh, jingle there. Now, the software is clever. It will play every track within that tag once before it repeats any. So even if I put the same tag in 100 times, as long as I've got at least 190 tracks, each time it will be different. So it's a way of um, you know, kind of just adding an element of shuffle to your playlist, completely randomizing it. And you can actually build a playlist completely made up of tags if you wanted to. So I could build a 90s show as simple as that. And what that will do is that will play a random 90s track followed by a random jingle, random 90s, random jingle. And I could schedule that for two hours and it would just for two hours continuously play a random 90s, random jingle back and forth just like that. So you can build a playlist even as simple as that.
just play back to back 90s tracks for an hour or something like that. It's we've, we've made these tools just to take a lot of that work from you. So you can focus, as I said, on your content and your marketing. So you could build a playlist that just contains that if you wanted to. Uh, recordings, if you've got any old live shows and you want to repeat them, it's simply a case of adding that file to your playlist. There we go. I'm now playing an old two hour long show that I did, uh, I think in uh, September or something like that. And it's just going to play it within my now two hour long playlist like such. Uh, and a voice track. So as I said, this will let you record your voice for up to 10 minutes in length. Great, efficient way of recording content. Uh, so if I want to record my own, click on this microphone button at the top here. If I click on that, it will take me to my voice track uh, screen. So I want to click on this red microphone button. It will then ask me to select what input I want to use, you know, so what I'm going to be using to uh, talk or play music through. So choose the right option. That's the audio interface I want to use. And this will be a very, very similar option in your broadcaster for live broadcasting or, or but if you wanted to use that. It will just ask you to select what input you want to use. And what will happen is every piece of audio going through that device will be captured when you're voice tracking or when you're broadcasting live. So I could have a mixing desk that has a microphone plugged into it, a piece of music, you know, or a phone with some music on it, uh, and maybe someone on, on the phone, you know, to talk to. Hit record, all the audio is then going through your desk, going into here, and you're recording all the audio that's plugged into that device. And again, the same applies to live broadcasting as well. But when you're happy with the decision you've made, click on this, and it'll then start counting backwards from 10 minutes. So you can see it's counting backwards and it's recording everything that I'm saying through my microphone. So I could use this time to introduce a piece of music that's coming up next, maybe, uh, or introduce an old show. I could interview someone. I could just talk for 10 minutes. Or uh, another way people are using this, particularly a, a convenient way for uh, community radio, is using this tool to record adverts or community shout outs or you know, things like that. You don't necessarily have to build a, an advert, a commercial with all the bells and whistles on it. Sometimes, particularly where podcasting is concerned, sometimes just a dry vocal ad for 30 seconds talking about how good something is or where someone can purchase something or a an offer code, something like that. So that's a really great way of recording an advert within the software. Just record it here. You don't need a professional setup like software wise. Select your microphone, click record, and away you go. Now, if you're happy with this, you click on stop. And in a moment or so, you'll be able to listen back to it to make sure that it sounds uh, okay. I can click on the, pl uh, the play button, which it will display. There we go. I can hit the play button. If I like what I hear, excellent. Uh, if I don't, I can clear recording and start again. If I do like it, but I don't like the way I start or how I finish it, you do actually have access to a track editor. Now, it's not a fancy track editor. You can't chop anything in the middle of it or splice anything or put any music in, under it. It will just allow you to amend how a track starts and how a track finishes. So maybe if you made a mistake at the beginning or you didn't like the, the choice of words at the end, you can chop or fade them out. If you do like it, just give it a name. So we'll just call this one Phil Intro Thursday, something like that. Click on create. It'll then create that and save it by default at the bottom of my playlist. Now, of course, if I don't want it there, I could just move it around like so. And there we, there we go. It's introducing my show here. And there we go. That's my show built. I've got an intro for it, a bit of music, and an old show that I'm going to repeat. Now, I'm happy with this playlist, so I'm going to click on save changes. And I'm going to go and schedule it in. So this is where you'll go for your schedule. You can see here. This is the days of the week along the top and times down by the side. And as I scroll down through my station, you'll see everything that I've got on my show. And in fact, I've actually only got two shows. I have a live uh, breakfast show here, 9 till 12, and then a live evening show or drive time show, maybe 6 till 9. Funnily enough, that's what most um, local stations do, even sort of national stations do. They will have a live breakfast show, maybe a live drive time uh, show, and then it's filler. It's pre-recorded shows uh, throughout of it. So that's kind of what I've replicated here. Now, if you remember, as I said, every time there's a gap in your schedule, the default playlist will automatically fade in. So that's exactly what it will do here. As Alan is finishing his live show, the software knows nothing's coming next. So what it will do is he will fade out at 12. And as soon as Alan starts fading out, uh, you know, at two seconds to 12, the default playlist will automatically fade in and they will crossfade together. So as soon as it hits 12 o'clock, the default playlist is playing until six o'clock in this time. Now, the default playlist will always fill in the time it's supposed to. Even if your default playlist is one hour long, 
it will play in this example six times on loop because there's six hours to fill. It will always fill in that time. So what most people do on our software is they'll build shows here and there and they let us fill in the gaps. So I'll show you how that looks. So I'm going to schedule a show from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. tomorrow. So I'm going to got I've got Friday here, Friday, the 12th of February. I'm going to click on two o'clock and I'm going to drag it down to the time I want my show to finish, which in this case is four o'clock. When I let go of the mouse. You just need to confirm the information regarding this show. So you can see here, first of all, my show starts at two, runs for two hours, and therefore finishes at four. So that sounds great. Now, currently, I've only got it scheduled for Friday. But if I wanted this show to go out on multiple times um, uh, across the week, maybe this is a mid-afternoon show that you want to do every single day on your radio station. If that's the case, you don't need to schedule it every single day manually let us replicate it for you. So I'm going to select Tuesday as well and Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, or every day. And it will then schedule you this uh, show two till four every day. And the same applies on a weekly basis. We don't expect you to create the same programming every single week. Allow us to help you. So if you click on week, you can put in a random date and it will schedule it up until a random date up to two years in the future. Uh, we're not going to go that mad uh, today. We're just going to schedule it for 12 months instead. So I'm going to select the 11th of February, 2022, and it will schedule it for 12 months. Now, before I click on create event, I need to confirm one more thing. I need to tell the software what kind of show this is going to be. So if I click on the advanced tab, where it says event type, there's a couple of options. First of all, playlist. Now, what this will do is, as the name suggests, this simply means I'm going to play a playlist on my radio station. So at the top here, where it does say playlist conveniently, this is a drop down menu. So if I click on that, you'll see these are the playlists I've made so far. Thursday night, even though it's on a Friday afternoon, ignore that. <laughs> but I'm going to select Thursday night. There we go. And that's going to play two till four every day, every week for the next 12 months. There's also an option here called Overrun. That's a very handy tool to have. By default, it's off. What that means is when this show is about to finish at four o'clock, even if there's still two minutes left of a track that's currently playing, it will fade out in favor of the next show starting at four o'clock. So it's a good option to have it turned off if you know you want your shows to start at exactly the times they should. If you select on, the software will allow the currently playing track to finish playing before the next show starts. So it may mean your show's uh, you know, start a couple of minutes late, perhaps. But arguably, it sounds better to finish playing an entire song before the next show starts. So just a nice option to consider there. So if I click on Create Event, you'll actually see how quick it how quick it's going to uh, schedule it in. There we go. So this means I've scheduled 12 months worth of content and it took, what, two seconds to do? That's how easy it needs to be. You don't need to spend so much time and effort building the, the shows for your station. Just focus on the content you want to put inside of it or, again, the marketing you want to do for your station. But you can now see two till four, the Thursday night playlist. Again, ignore the fact it's starting on a Friday in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, so what will happen here is this playlist is, about, is going to automatically fade in at two and then automatically fade out at four because that's the time you've asked it to. Likewise, there are gaps either side of this show. And as I said, the default playlist will fill it in. So if I just scroll through Friday, it doesn't look like it, but that's 24 hours of content scheduled. Sure, most of these schedule is blank, but your default playlist is filling that in. So, you know, you could have hours upon hours of music in there that also features jingles, adverts, voice links. It's totally up to you. Some people actually manage their entire station through just one default playlist that's got 24 hours worth of content in it. It's totally up to you about how you manage your station. We're just giving you a few options on how to do it. Uh, now, if you want this to be a live show, we just need to do it slightly differently. So here on the event type, I'm going to select live DJ here. Now, what I need to do is confirm with the software uh, which DJ this is going to be, because it's going to be expecting that particular person to be logged in. So on this drop down option here, I'm going to select so I'll be an e egotistical maniac and I'll select myself. So this means the software is going to be expecting me, Phil, to be live on air. If I want to record the broadcast and turn it into a podcast when it's finished, I'll select on. And this where it says track information. What this will do is this will either display the metadata for any tracks that I play, or if you select playlist, you can actually have it uh, the metadata display the information for that show. So it will say something like uh, live DJ Phil for my entire show, or the individual track information of what I'm playing. If I click on update event, 
it will update it. And even though I've scheduled it for 12 months already, I can still make as many changes to it as I want. Likewise, I can make changes to the show even while it's on air. If you've got a DJ that you're unhappy with, why not kick them off mid-show and replace them with someone else? You can do that. So now you can see two till four, me, live DJ Phil, I'm going live. As a DJ, I can connect up to five minutes before I'm due on air. So I will log into my radio.co account. I'll open up the broadcaster, or but it will say I'm connected. It will count down to the time I'm supposed to go live on air. And then exactly two o'clock, I will fade in. And exactly four o'clock, I will fade out. A DJ can only go live at the times they've been specified. So even if I logged in at one o'clock, which I can, I can only go live at exactly two o'clock because that's the time I'm supposed to be on air. Now, if I have any technical difficulties, you can see exactly what my backup playlist will be. And recording has been enabled. So I know I have an MP3 version of my show when I come off air. And that's how easy it is to do a live show. You just need to invite someone onto your account. And the great thing about, you know, community radio stations is getting the community involved. Is there someone who wants to do a live show on your radio station? They don't need the most professional equipment on earth. They just need an average computer, a um, you know, a decent internet connection uh, and just the passion to go. And this software is all cloud-based, as I say, and that includes for DJs. All a DJ will need is their own login in details. They go to log into their radio.co account and that's it. They're live on air. That's all they need. They don't need to install or download a thing. So get members of the community involved, particularly during this time. We're not necessarily allowed in our uh, radio studios at this time. So you may already be broadcasting at home. This is just an easy way of doing it. Uh, so I'm going to remove this now. I'm going to click on delete. You can delete just the event you've selected, or in this case, I'm going to delete them all here. But you'll see very quick, very easy to actually remove everything just like that. Now, just while I was on the topic of um, uh, doing live shows, what a lot of people like to do, particularly on their shows, is they like to do uh, live talk shows, um, particularly getting live callers on their radio station. So what I do is I'm just going to share with you a guide. There's me again. I'm just going to share you uh, a guide that uh, we have actually have available on our website, which tells you a bit more information about how to take live calls on air. So there we go. You should be able to see it there. So um, what we've got here is how to take live calls with Mix Minus. That's a particular cable that you can use to very easily take live calls. So it's it's absolutely worth going to our website, uh, radio.co forward slash blog, type in live calls or just Google radio.co live callers, and you will find this. And we've actually got a video that our founder, James Mulvaney, has put together. And he actually demonstrates four different ways you can very easily get live callers on your station with nothing more than a cable and a mixing desk. So we like to call the down and dirty way. There we go, like so. A very simple way of getting your uh, live caller on air is simply holding up a phone to a microphone. Now you may think, you know, how good can that sound? The honest truth is, it's not gonna sound great, but it sounds decent enough. You know, it's gonna sound as if someone's on the phone speaking to you. Uh, one note that's really worth uh, keeping in mind is, um, it's probably to use WhatsApp to get callers on your radio station. The reason being, it's not everyone's favorite app, uh, but WhatsApp produces a very high quality sound, which far surpasses, um, you know, uh, phone lines, uh, things like Skype and Zoom, things like that. Um, so consider getting your live callers on WhatsApp and they will have a much richer sound to them. And they will instantly sound much better than just holding a phone to a microphone. Uh, another way is taking callers through the browser. That's what I mentioned before. We have our talk show. So again, not to use for live shows, but as a way of getting callers from all walks of life all over the world join a pre-recorded show, use our radio.co talk show feature. So there's just instructions on how to do it. You invite them into a room like such. That's it. And they get going. Uh, there's also some pieces of equipment such as the Rodecaster Pro, which is a fantastic piece of kit if you are lucky enough to have one. Um, and this actually has Bluetooth compatibility to easily link up a smartphone uh, or a tablet to it. So this is a great way. There will be other desks, I'm sure, um, that will allow you to do this. But, you know, just connect a smartphone to uh, a desk via Bluetooth and that's it. Again, sound quality is not going to be too good and Bluetooth can sometimes be a little hokey, but a very, very easy way to do it. And uh, the Mix Minus setup is here. So it goes into a bit more detail about how to plug in a mobile phone to a mixing desk. But that's honestly the easiest way that people have found getting a live caller. As I said, if you've got a mixing desk with microphones plugged in, a music source, a phone plugged into it, all the audio traveling through that piece of equipment will go out on air. And so having a live caller uh, associated through this, along with your microphone, you can play music, 
talk to guests on there, get live callers on, and just as you would expect to do on a typical radio station. Particularly important if you do want to get the community involved and really get that community radio feel. So it's a, a fantastic article to have a read through. Likewise, the video is very intuitive and you can find that on our YouTube channel if you are watching on YouTube currently or just go to our blog where you will find tons of, uh, of more uh, advice there. Uh, okay, so let's go back to uh, the demonstration uh, demonstration screen. Okay, here we go. So, um, so listen, the listen tab. This is where people will go to find your station. This is obviously the most important thing you'll need to take away. There's so many different ways people can listen to your station. First of all, we have this. This is a unique URL that's automatically assigned to your account when you create it. This will allow people a very easy way of listening to your station because all they need to do is click on this link. Now, there are a couple of things, I guess, niggles with this. First of all, it's not pretty to look at. One, because it does contain radio.co in there. We use this link uh, just as much for identifying your station as much as you use it for listening. So this can't be customized. But also the other thing is when people click on it, it will take them to a black browser tab on their computer or mobile phone, simply stream, streaming your station. It's not the prettiest thing to look at because there's nothing to look at, but it's a very, very easy way people can listen. Uh, you can also integrate your station with a number of internet radio directories, such as Streamer here. Um, this uh, is still a very, very popular way people listen to online radio. And we actually have a guide on over 30 you can submit to. So, uh, you know, again, you'll find information about that on our help center. That's help.radio.co. Um, a lot of people do ask us about tuning. Tuning are a bit of a, an unusual case. They've, they've actually stopped accepting new submissions to their online radio directory since about sort of mid to late 2018, these stops. There's no official reason why you can submit interest to tune in. And, you know, once they do reconsider inviting people, they can consider uh, bringing your station onto it. But, yeah, the, you'll find a bit more information on their website. Or, again, James has done a fant another fantastic video about these directories. Um, so tune in, not possible for new stations to get involved in. But if you had access to tune in in the past and you want to start a new station, it can be possible to still get on there. Arguably, go uh, down the web player route. This is if you have your own website, which could be hugely beneficial for your uh, radio station. One, because you can have a domain name that's unique to your station and to your community. And people will go to that domain name. They'll find a web player that looks something like this. Click on the add play button. It takes about 60 seconds. It just asks you what shape and size you want it. You can have it display the cover art like we've got here for Ed Sheeran here, or you can have it display the branding for your station or the branding for a particular uh, uh, company, maybe. You know, another great way is getting advertisers to sponsor your shows. You know, you could have the drive time show sponsored by a uh, local garage or something like that. And an easy way of doing that is, why don't you apply a custom piece of artwork to your shows? You can do that. So for the entire duration of your drive time show, you've got a piece of artwork for that business. So it means people who are listening on the website or through a mobile app, something like that, they will see the artwork for that company. And that means they're getting a good revenue. And most importantly, you're getting a good revenue off them. So that's a really great, easy way of um, you know, drumming up interest for people advertising, get them to a sponsor specific shows is far more beneficial for them and for you. Uh, jumping ahead here, there are other ways people can listen. As I just teased before, you can build a dedicated mobile app. This is very, very important to consider for a community radio station because you want to give people the most efficient ways of listening to your station. Sure, not everyone has the same interest in smartphones or not everyone is tech technically savvy enough to operate one, but that doesn't matter. Giving people more ways of listening to your station, you know, rather than just through a computer, you want it to make it such an easy experience where they're listening to the radio in such a stress-free way. They don't even realize how long they're listening to your station for. The way to do that is through an iPhone or an Android app. They do come at an extra charge for your station. They are £12 or $15 a month each here. Or if you subscribe to our higher end plans, our gold and our pro plans, some or all of these can be included. Uh, the same with Alexa skill. That's almost become uh, a, an important item in people's homes. It can be just as important to have a, a smart speaker as it is a fridge or a washing machine or a TV, something like that. Having something that just constantly plays music or radio to you 24 hours a day is, you know, it's people don't even realize just how popular it is to do. And all they need to do is ask Alexa 
I've got to be careful because I've got one near me. Uh, it's just asking Alexa to play your radio station. And with our Alexa skills and our mobile apps, they are 100% dedicated to your station. They don't elude or include any of our branding in them. So if I just show you what an iPhone app looks like, you choose the name of your app, what it looks like on the home screens, and then you just follow our step-by-step -step guide on how it looks, you know, the color scheme, the logos you want to attach to it. Uh, social media links, even a website or a YouTube channel. So these are great ways of the community getting in touch with you. They can go on this app, open up your a direct link to your Facebook or your Twitter account, and just get in contact with you through there or visit your website, maybe to request a song or something like that. So just giving people more ways of conveniently listening to their station with minimal effort is something to consider as a way of easily bringing your community together. Uh, requests. This is, will be a very popular feature with it with a, a community radio station. This just gives people the ability to request tracks uh, in a very similar way to the web player. You will actually build a widget which will list numerous tracks that you can play. I'll show you what one may look like. You choose what one looks like. It will, um, you know, have a different color scheme. What tracks they can choose from, and they will then go into your track manager, and all your requests will be listed here for you to add into your queues into your playlist. So, again, if you want your community to get involved, this request manager is a good way of doing it. We have statistics to allow you to monitor your station's performance. Obviously, if you're community driven, you're not really bothered where in the world people are listening from. You just want to know how many and how long they're spending listening to it. So this is where you'll get it from. Here you can see over the last 30 days, exactly in my case, where in the world people are coming from, uh, where, you know, how they're listening. So computer, smartphone or smart speaker, something like that. Also, real time, if you want to know who's listening right now, then you can. I've got a live me member in Germany and endorse it here in the UK. Uh, reports, this is primarily for uh, licensing. As a general overview with licensing, if you do plan to play copyrighted material, we do strongly advise you getting a broadcast license, just to make sure you've got the legal green light to play whatever you want. Um, now, we don't include licensing in any of our plans, so it would be something you would need to seek out independently. We do have a great help guide, again, uh, within our blog. Uh, if you just type in radio.co licensing, you will find it there. Um, but it's just a way of pointing in the right direction to get in your license. But generally speaking, you will pay a yearly license fee to a local organization based in your country. Uh, you pay that fee and then every month, maybe every couple of months, they'll ask you to send them a report of everything that you've played so they know who to pay in royalties and how much to pay in royalties. And this is where you'll get it from. Track summary is looking up the last 30 days and it will say, show me what tracks I played, how many times they played, how many people listened to them. Your organizations may also ask you for total listening hours and you'll find this in statistics, just statistics, TTSL, total time spent listening. This is where you can download these reports, send them off, or keep them for your own records. Settings, really for you to have a little play around with really here, but uh, as a general overview, this is where you choose the name and the look for your station. Uh, your broadcasting quality can be amended here, so a default crossfade for how long it takes for your tracks to fade in and fade out. Live anytime, that's a great feature for the owner of the account. That means they can go live anytime they like. They don't need to schedule themselves in. So if you are a community-driven station and uh, maybe there's been a big crash somewhere on, on, a, on a busy main road or, um, you know, there's the... Some, something's happened, you know, a, a celebrity, a local celebrity has passed, something like that, then, you know, you can cover breaking news in such an easy way. Just connect to your live broadcaster and you're instantly on air to cover whatever you want. And I think someone did ask a question early on about um, do, do live broadcasts take over? Uh, they do. So a live broadcast will take over anything that's automated. So if you've got a, a pre-recorded automated show playing, if you connect live, you'll instantly replace that. And your streaming quality. So all of our plans let you broadcast to a really high quality CD quality of sound. That's 192 kbps. Our pro plan, that's our most expensive plan, will actually let you broadcast up to 320. Uh, we have advanced features such as your album and artist separation. If you are relying on tags to play tracks at random, uh, of course, you don't want the same artists to play too often in a certain amount of time. So this is where you can come. You can put in tags that you allowed. So you want things like jingle to play as often as possible, but not the same artist. So you can see you can uh, space it out quite a uh, quite a large amount of time there. Uh, we have integrations with our podcasting platform. 
Zapier, that will let you connect it currently to Google Drive and Dropbox. But we are always looking at ways to expand the capabilities of this app. So more functions will be coming soon. Even Twitter can automatically tweet out information of any track that you're playing. Uh, and then users, if you do want to invite other people onto your account, this is where you go. You go to invite a user at the top, enter the name, the email address, and what role you want this person to have. Each role has a, a dwindling uh, level of access. So if you want someone to have the least amount of access, give them DJ or guest DJ. And that will just give someone the ability to log in remotely, host a live show, and log back out. And again, as I mentioned about a DJ is, they don't need to install or download anything. They just log in and away they go at the time that they've been specified. Uh, okay, guys, so that's um, obviously there's quite a lot there I've covered over uh, 40 minutes or so of, of how the software works. But what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to uh, sort of open it out to some questions. Uh, now, there are some questions that were asked um, sort of uh, when our emails about this uh, event uh, were going live. So I'm just going to share that now. So let me just share my uh, my little slides here with some questions that I've asked already. So I'll cover these ones first. There you go. You should be able to see them now. Okay. So a couple of questions already that have been asked. First of all, from Bill from uh, Pop-Up Radio USA. Uh, can I play music from Spotify or Apple Music whilst on air? Uh, technically, you can. Morally, it's a little bit of a gray area. Um, so technically wise, yeah, if you have something like, you know, as I said about a mixing desk, you've maybe got a phone or a tablet plugged into that. Um, that has something like Spotify or Apple Music on it. Sure, pick tracks, pick playlists, fade them in, fade them out, talk in between. As long as that music source is plugged into uh, your computer and you've selected that uh, that uh, device to be on air, it should go out on air. Morally, though, Spotify and Apple Music and many other streaming services do say in their terms of service that um, it, you know that you're not allowed, you're not permitted to use their content for live broadcasting. Even if you are paying a subscription fee, you're not permitted to uh, use it as part of a broadcast, particularly if you are making revenue off your station. So something to consider there. Technically, you can do it, but you know it's it's your responsibility about whether you do or uh, don't. Um, Tamara from Art Soul Radio says, is there a way to allow the community listening to talk or make comments whilst broadcasting? Uh, we don't have a feature in particular that will allow you to open up like a live chat box, something like that. But the advice we always say is what you should consider is opening up your station publicly in the sense of if you want people to get involved with your station, um, ask them to get in touch with you via the likes of Twitter or um, uh, you know, Twitter, Facebook, even Instagram, maybe. The reason we, we say that is make your public interaction a bit more public because by having an active social media account, you're essentially increasing your online presence. The more active, the more busy, the more traffic going through your Facebook page, the more likely it's going to show up if people are searching for something to do with your station. Even if someone misspells the name of another station and they find yours because your Facebook page is so popular, Try and make your communication as widely available, as accessible as possible. So the more people that are communicating with you through Twitter, for example, the chance, the more chances people are going to find you on Twitter and, and start listening to you. So it helps boost your promoting and also the likelihood of getting new audiences. If you do want something a bit more private, you would have to look at something like a third party widget for a website or email, something like that. Uh, Alex from 562 Live says, how do you suggest using contests or giveaways for more community involvement? Uh, it's a great question. Um, I guess obviously getting, it depends what you want for your contests or your giveaways. You know, if you can bag some free stuff again from a local business, easiest way for a local community is just to attract that small local business. Um, you know, on a local radio station I used to work at, we used to, um, Quite frequently, a couple of times a year, used to give away a uh, an adult and a child's bicycle from the local supplier of you know a very small shop. They were just happy to get a bit of um, bit of a recognition online. They gave us a bike for free, and you know we talked about their business a little bit. Do something like that. Attract the small businesses and get people to enter these competitions in the most stress free, effortless way. Simply, you know. You could, I guess, get a revenue going in, ask people to um, donate money or something, um, you know, in order to uh, have an entry. But ask people simply on social media just to share this image and you can win a bike or people just to send a text into your station or send an email. Something that requires 
as little effort as possible is the best way to engage people in doing it. We all love things for free, but we also love things for free if it doesn't cost us anything to do it, including time. So uh, yeah, if it's just um, a caption contest, something like that, it gets people laughing, gets people sharing it. The more people sharing your post, the more listeners you can potentially open out to. So Use contests and giveaways as a way of helping you to promote your station as well. Again, social media is a fantastic tool to use. So, yeah, attract local businesses, um, even if the prize is small, even if it's just something like, um, you know, a free meal at the local pub, that's saving someone five, 10, 15 pounds, maybe. You know, it's it's doesn't matter how big or small it is. You're helping each other out. You're helping businesses. They're helping you. I hope that uh, answers your question, Alex. Um, Ty from WTAI Radio says, how do I live stream my show to create higher viewership? Uh, obviously, you can go live any way that you like on your station. I suspect what you're asking about is in terms of streaming, so making your station available elsewhere, uh, like video format, for example. Um, you can actually use programs such as this. We're actually broadcasting on a platform called uh, StreamYard. It's a very good uh, piece of tool to do. So I'm just live streaming, obviously, audio and video, you know, visuals. So use things like StreamYard or something like OBS to live stream your station to both Facebook and YouTube as well. One thing to mind just about Facebook, if you are broadcasting copyrighted material like music through Facebook Live, you'll most likely get cut uh, and muted. Uh, they're not covered for copyright uh, copyrighted material. So only really live stream uh, talk content through uh, Facebook Live. Something to keep in mind there. But yeah, OBS or StreamYard are two really great ways of doing it. Um, Brett has asked, uh, I want to use Radio.co as a cloud base for my FM station, complete with automation and programming. Is that possible? Um, yes, Brett, depending on what it is you want to do. So you, a lot of people all over the world are using our software to give their FM and AM stations a online presence. So you can just use Radio.co simply as a way to send an FM frequency or AM frequency over the internet. It does mean, however, you don't use any of our scheduling tools because you will just be using Radio.co as a live 24-7 stream, a 24-7 broadcast, essentially. Um, but it's a very, very easy way to, uh, uh, thing to set up using uh, some equipment. So piece of equipment called the Barracks InStreamer or XStreamer, and that will allow you to um, connect it to a, uh, an online platform. Uh, again, we've got a great article. Actually, if you just Google Radio.co, um, how to broadcast FM, something like that, you will. Uh, we've got a great article and a video that will show you how to actually set it up. So, um, yeah, that's uh, your answer to that question. And then lastly here, we've got um, Hemel says, uh, what is the best way to target a particular commune and motivate them into listening and participating? In all honesty, that's kind of like the the woe or also the challenge of having a, a community based radio station. Um, you know, you'll want to target a specific target area, as an audience, um, you know, a community. It's really just all about trying to promote your station, which again is easier said than done. Um, it's all about getting out there. If you want to get the community involved, you have to get involved in the community. Why not? Um, you know, just advertise heavily on social media, maybe try and get appearances on local TV or local newspapers, newsletters, things like that. Maybe just put some posters up, things like that. It's it's all about making sure people are aware of your presence. Once people start listening, they begin talking, they begin sharing, they begin, you know, noticing what you're doing. Um, and then really in terms of content wise, um, when it comes to content wise, it's all about just focusing on that community. The easiest way to attract people to radio is making it personal. Radio is something that is that you're listening to. When people are listening, um, when you're presenting radio, you're presenting radio for, for you. These are the hits you want to listen to. These are the hits that, to make you feel better. You know, if you want to get involved, give me a ring. Go on, you. If you're addressing people personally, people respond to that and they, they, they enjoy that. So making sure all of your content is addressed to the local community, local businesses, you know, entice businesses to get involved with just advertising, even if it's for free, just offer people free opportunities to get involved in your station and you will see your listenership increase. Um, yeah, so I hope that um, has answered your, your question, Hemel, there. But you will find a bit lots more of information uh, to do with community radio stations, FM stations, and just general uh, do's and don'ts and hows and how nots uh, on uh, our website and our blog and our radio.co university. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so we've got just just a little over five minutes left. So um, you have been um, sending uh, me questions live and uh, Jack has very helpfully been adding them into my chat feed here. 
So let's just go through a couple of um, the questions here. So uh, Chris, uh, I've not got a last name here, sorry, Chris, but Chris has asked, how many songs does the cheapest package hold approximately? That actually links into another question people ask, that how many tracks should I upload to my radio station? So our cheapest plan, our light plan, allows you to upload, um, it's two gigabytes. So we say roughly maybe about 500 average length tracks, something like that. Average length based on four to five minutes long each so you know it's all it's up to you about how many you want to upload essentially my my advice from from years of working in radio is you're only really playing a few hundred on rotation at a time tracks that you necessarily put in your a list will be played three four maybe five times a day uh, b list maybe once every once a day c list maybe once every two days something like that so maybe you, you have your own rotation of three to five hundred tracks maybe you can expand that take them all out um but yeah you don't necessarily if you have thousands of tracks it's not necessary it's not necessary to always upload all of them you know particularly if you're targeting a particular audience or community you know just uh, find out what they want to listen to before you bombard them with everything that you like um let's have a look um, can I broadcast my shows after they're broadcast? Yes, if you schedule your shows uh, to record, uh, yeah, you can download them, but you do have to subscribe to at least the bronze plan uh, in order to uh, do that. Uh, Noel has asked, can I play an artist without copyright? Uh, similar to the question Bill asked earlier, uh, technically you can, but morally um, it, it's it's your responsibility, really. Uh, if there are an unsigned artist that you want to play on your station, particularly if it's a community station, if you've got an up-and-coming band, they don't necessarily need um, copywriting for that because um, only people who have officially copyrighted and registered their stations do have royalties. I would just say if you're playing a lot of local music, unsigned music, get written permission. Um, so then it just doesn't bite you in the bottom afterwards. Make sure you have written permission to say that you are playing this track and they don't see any royalties from it or something like that. So local artists, unsigned bands, things like that, get written permission for that. It's always best. Uh, Jeff has asked, where is the cover art for the players generated from? Uh, the cover art actually comes from the um, from your schedule. So the, the web players will display whatever uh, is has been asked on its schedule, whether that is the individual cover art for your tracks or a piece of customized artwork you have placed on your um, tracks you know, or your show, you know, a piece of artwork for a particular one hour long show, something like that. As for the individual tracks, they are automatically pulled from Apple's music base. So as long as you upload tracks and they're labeled and named correctly, uh, they uh, they should pull the artwork from Apple Music. Of course, if Apple Music hasn't got anything that you have, which is quite rare, but it can happen, uh, you can upload your custom piece of artwork to it. Or again, if it's the wrong piece of artwork, you can change it. So uh, yeah, hope that's um, answered your question there, Jeff. Uh, can a DJ see how long it is left on the song so they know when to speak? Uh, that kind of plays into another couple of questions I've seen about using DJ software. Um, so on, you may have seen on the screen before. So what a DJ will see is they'll just see a very, very restricted version of Radio.co. They, we don't have any specific DJ playout software. So you don't see any like virtual DJ decks where you can fire off tracks and know how long each, excuse me, how much, uh, how many tracks are left, uh, how many minutes left of that track are playing. What you would do is you would ideally use some additional DJ software like Serato DJ, Virtual DJ. I think someone's mentioned um, Tractor in, in the questions. Um, some of the most popular DJ software such as that can be very easily connected directly to Radio.co. And we actually, on all three of those, we actually have help guides that will show you how to connect them together. And you can use those interfaces to actually load up tracks um, talking between them, fire them off, fade them in, fade them out, talking between them. And they um, those softwares should count down how much time you've got left of your track. So the answer is yes, you can see how much time is left of a particular track, but you would need to use some additional software um, alongside it. The likes of Virtual DJ, Serato DJ or Tractor are just three that we do have guides for. That's why I've uh, mentioned them. So I hope that's uh, answered your question. Um, let's have a look. More questions there. I've got uh, literally about a minute left. Um, what have we got here? Um, I think I've answered that. Yeah. Can I change the artwork of a song? I've already answered that, Patrick. I hope you, you made a note of that. Uh, how do you prevent tracks of the same title by different artists from not repeating? Um, in honesty, it, it's 
you can't really you can put artist and album separation rules so you can stop the same artist playing too frequently but if you've got three different cover versions of a particular track there's nothing really there to stop the software pulling out those tracks if it's in the same tag you could potentially you know if, if the different genres maybe there's a a a rock song and it's got a ska version it's got a rap version and it's got a pop cover of it of course they're in different tags so if you don't put those tags in there there's not really a chance of it playing but uh ultimately that would be something of your responsibility if you were to make sure that you didn't have too many duplicates of the same tracks um so so um, you know hope i've been able to, to answer a lot of your questions no there's there's a lot coming in don't worry if you just keep asking the questions um we'll be able to follow them up as soon as possible if you have any particular questions you do want to ask uh, send me an email it's just studio at radio.co and you know i'll answer as, as many as i can i do apologize for not being able to answer everyone's questions but i do hope you have found the presentation uh helpful and that's sort of the last thing i'm going to show just before i disappear is just notifying you. I've mentioned it a lot throughout the course of uh, this demonstration. We have tons and tons and tons of incredible help guides and video tutorials that we spend a lot of time putting together. So I, I hugely, I very, very highly recommend subscribing to both our radio.co channel and our founder, James Mulvaney's on YouTube. Uh, you know, we can see a couple of videos here about ways to make money, helping you write scripts. That's that live call video before. If you just want to see what a, what a professional studio looks like, We've even got studio tours and case studies on a lot of these stations that are broadcasting successfully and happily through us. And as I mentioned before, even things like a guide on the online radio directories you can submit to and how to submit to them. There's so much useful resources. Of course, we would love you and prefer you to be customers of ours. But at the end of the day, we just want to help people unleash that passion that they have for radio and just get broadcasting in the easiest most stress-free possible if that's with us excellent if not i do hope what you find that we offer to you is as helpful as it possibly can be so yeah head to our uh, official uh, youtube channel radio.co and also james mulvaney's on uh, youtube as well to find lots more helpful information like this pretty much about everything you could ever want out of uh, how to launch your online radio station. As for this presentation, I do hope you have found it useful and you have a better idea on how Radio.co can work for helping you launch your very own online radio station, uh, particularly a community-driven one. Uh, as I said, again, do send an email to studio at radio.co if you have any outstanding questions, or we'll also go through these comments as well and try and reply to as many as we possibly can. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining me, guys. Uh, take care, stay safe, and uh, yeah. Hope to you, uh, join me again soon. Take care. Starting a radio station has never been easier. Click here and I'll take you to a free guide which shows you exactly how you can start a radio station with minimal fuss, no technical headaches, plus also start getting those all-important listeners. How does that sound? Click here and I will take you to my free guide.